I'm afraid he does not have the background to represent this country uh, internationally, for example. He has but wait, not- wait, did Ob- Obama had zero abilities internationally. He had no foreign policy experience whatsoever. In fact, it was his greatest weakness, which the dummy John McCain didn't exploit. It's why people were ready to elect that warmonger, John, John McCain, as opposed to Obama, but the Republicans told McCain to lay off Obama. No, Obama had no foreign policy experience. You know, I don't understand why it would inhibit a man with intelligence who knows what's going on from conducting decent foreign policy. Well, he has already, oh, he has already given some uh, answers to questions that were very problematic when it comes to foreign policy. So who would you say, okay, well, let's start with the beginning of this. Are you opposed to Donald Trump, or do you support him? I believe that Carly Fiorina, the Fox News declared her that... Wait, wait, you didn't, wait, hold it, ma'am. Are you opposed to Donald Trump, or would you support him? Put aside the, the VP question. Commentator for, for Fox News. Ma'am, you're not answering a question. I need to ask you again. Would you support Donald Trump? Let's put aside the VP question. Would you support Trump or would you oppose him? No, I support him totally, 100%. All right, fine. I needed to find out if you were just a Democrat calling under the guise of caring. Okay, so you care about Trump. You'd like to see him win. You don't think that a woman or a black man would help him get elected. Who then could he pick for VP? I'm trying to think from the the ones who are running against him. um, Perhaps Cruz, but... There, he's a bit problematic too. I think Cruz, if uh, when President Trump is elected, I hope that he appoint, appoints Cruz to the Supreme Court. Well, I would like to see Cruz running a, a um, one of the major, de- you know, let us say one of the major departments would be great to have Cruz. I think Cruz has limitations as a leader. And there are reasons I say that, because there's a difference between being intelligent, having good positions, and being electable. I don't think he's electable nationally for reasons I don't want to mention right here, because I don't want to undermine him. But I still think that, uh, I'm sorry to say that this country's racially quite uh, volatile right now because of all the years of community organizing by Obama. Don't you think that having a, an African-American running mate would help him with the African-American vote? No, I think that Mr. Trump can win the African-American vote just by being himself. I have many African-American friends who say that they are going to support uh, Mr. Trump. They like him. They like him because he's a straight shooter and they like straight talk after all the liars. I get that. I understand that very well. Even Democrats who are African, the Democrats will vote for him because they're tired of the liar Hillary Clinton. I get that. But don't you think that there are a lot of Others, swing voters, are not as, who are not as thoughtful or uh, uh, as intelligent as your friends who might just vote based upon image? No, I believe that Mr. Trump will carry a significant part of the black vote. The Democrats are going to be surprised in this election. All right, so we haven't picked a, a, a running mate yet. I suppose we'd have to go, and I thank you for a very detailed analysis, and I'm glad I gave you the time to finish your thoughts. I would think that someone extremely strong on the military, I think a former general would be the perfect running mate for Donald Trump. And I mean a patent like general. I mean a take no prisoners, fuming, a fire breathing dragon if there are any left. And I don't know where they would be. Maybe a retired general from another era. I mean one of the old time military types who would strike fear into the hearts of our our opponents and our enemies. That's what would be just what the country needs. Not one of these uh, MBA, you know, as good as they may be, corporate kind of guys who never say anything that's true. I think we need a fire breathing patent if I don't know where you'd find one. But that's what America needs right now to stare down uh, our enemies. And there's another element to all this. I heard Trump mention, not on my show, that he could do business with uh, Putin, which I liked hearing. I can guarantee you that our relations with Russia would greatly improve under Trump. They would not be in the sad state that they're in uh, uh, right now. How could we take a nation that was our ally when this community organizer came to power? Russia was our ally. We were doing business with Russia. How could we have done this? How could we have set relations with Russia back 50 years, creating a new Cold War? How could he have done this? And he doesn't even, no one ever says a word. You talk about a Nobel Prize? 
Obama should be given the anti-Nobel Prize just for what he has done to reignite a Cold War with Russia. That's a whole separate issue, but you won't hear about that because Associated Press, Yahoo, Reuters, all the other leftist propaganda outlets are not going to ever discuss that. And none of the intelligentsia ever discusses what he's done with Russia. They all accept that Putin's no good. My friends, you need to study Russian history to understand what Russia is. Most of you are ignorant of Russia's history. Most of you don't know how many Russians died liberating the world from Hitler. We know what we paid, what price we as a nation paid. The Russians paid tenfold what we paid. The Russians lost, I think the number was 400,000 men in the last months of the war just taking Berlin. Just the rubble of Berlin, they lost 400,000 young men in the, in the fight. I mean, you, you look at the battles of Leningrad, Stalingrad. You look how Russia almost lost to Hitler, and they wouldn't give in. You know how Stalin, as evil as he was, was a master, a genius, a military genius. That's the, the paradox of some of these dictators. They were military geniuses, and he was a greater genius than Hitler, by the way, militarily. Hitler was a maniac. Hitler made many mistakes, thank God. And Stalin, as evil as he was, waited until the Russians were almost destroyed in their taking of Stalingrad. Then the winter came, as you know. And then what did Stalin do? He released his troops, his reserve troops. He kept back, I think the number was a half a million Siberian warriors. Siberian troops came out of nowhere wearing perfect winter clothing with white painted tanks and ran over the German lines in Stalingrad and crushed them to death. And as a result of that, there were 400,000 German prisoners, of whom 800, I think, returned to Germany after the war. Because let me tell you something, the, the Russians take no prisoners. And then when they do take prisoners, very few survive their, their prison camps. These, this nation has not, that nation has not changed that much. And when you're messing with a nation as powerful as that, which has built up its military as opposed to a man like Obama who has decimated our military, you're playing with fire when you start rattling sabers. So I think that Trump, who says he can do business with, with Putin and get along with him, because they, they're kind of similar, they're similar in so many ways, strong-willed, Machiavellian, uh, straight force of will, they're strong men in plain English. And what this nation is needing so desperately is a strong man who loves America rather than a weak man who's devious and hates America. Is that clear enough for you? Shall I repeat it for you? Write it down. Send it to Media Matters if you, if you, if you want. Write it down. Send it to those louts. Because when Trump becomes president, one of the first things I'm going to do is make sure that every member of the left-wing fanatic organizations in this country, I'd love to be put in charge of a new office that would investigate the most anti-American organizations, Media Matters, funded by Soros, the ACLU, God knows who funds those animals, the anti-Christian liber libertarian union, uh, the anti-Christian libertine union. I would go after every one of these front groups I would decimate them on their donations, and I would indict them when I find that they've committed some kind of government, some kind of felony, which they probably have done. I would do to them in spades what they have done to conservative organizations. And then I would turn the country back to Congress and the president, as opposed to these special interest uh, left-wing organizations which are really running the country. That's one of the things I would do. I wish there was such an office. I, it could be something like a new, let's say, a new example of, of UAC, which puts the fear of God into liberals. The minute I say UAC, the House on American Activities Committee, they go insane. They scream, McCarthy, McCarthy, McCarthy. What we need is McCarthy. What we need is a brave senator who will look into the communist infiltration into the United States of America, and they ought to start, start in the executive office. They don't have to go any further than Frank Marshall Davis's offspring. Yeah, we need a new UAC. I'd like to run it. Maybe I'll ask Trump to let me run UAC instead of to run the NIH. Just kidding. Just the talk shows with no ambitions whatsoever. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. My name is Bill. Voices, voices, voices. What would the media do if they looked at a photo that I found from 1959 
of a U.S. naval submarine, I think it was the USS Skate, which surfaced in the Arctic at the North Pole. Because there was melt ice back in that, in that day, in that year, 1959, right? Ship surfaces, submarine comes up. What would the media say? What would MSNBC be running? North Pole open water. Global warming melts ice cap. But it occurred back then, 1959. The ice was pretty thin. In fact, it was so thin the deckhands had to chip it off after surfacing. And there's a newsreel of it. But if you really want the facts, the easiest fact on global warming is the six ice ages that preceded us, followed by warming. Again, we're not arguing for pollution. Don't put me in that category. I probably have done more than most of the global warming gangsters to save what there is of this earth to save in the environment. I've done more. I'm not going to sell it to you. I don't care what you think. I know what I've done. Museums house my, my plant collections. I've been involved in the environmental area, the uh, ecological area, since, since the 1960s. And if I really thought that it was anthropogenic generated, I would say so. But I'm pretty sure it's 100% not. It's the greatest scam in my lifetime. The greatest big lie I've ever seen in my lifetime. And only this thin man could pull it off. If he could get away with gay marriage, if he could get away with socialized medicine, if he could get away with changing the Constitution, why can't he lie about this and go up there in his billion-dollar airplane with his entourage, billowing carbon dioxide and other toxicants into the environment, then going on a boat ride again destroying the environment and tell us how bad the environment is because of man? What a phony! And the Iran deal is even a bigger fraud. It's meant for one reason only, to triangulate Israel and make them give up uh, Judea and Samaria to those who would destroy them. Have a nice day.